Yeah. Sponsored by QT. Give me a, give me a point. <laughs> I'll just hold this up and smile at the camera the whole time. Tom. You. Tom. Tom. Arla. Tom. Hey. Tom. Folks, what Tom. is up? I'm John. It's David. I'm my mouthful. <laughs> he just finished a donut. And guess what? Kill Team demo copy is in. I assembled this sucker and I did a little bit of cheeky dry brushing and uh, it's uh, presentable at this point. <laughs> oh god, sorry. Turn I, the I, volume I have down. Five volumes, yes, you sorry. can watch us all you want. But we got the core book. Him too. What is with people in their volume right now? <laughs> this what it's kind got of operation we run in here. Right? Octarius book and the core rule book. And then uh, for release next Saturday, we will also have the core rule books by themselves as well as the. Uh, I guess you could call it an index, which is the Kill Team Compendium. I was going to say, you can uh, call it an index, but Games Workshop calls it a compendium. It's a compendium because it's not for, you know, 8th edition for the thing. So that is cool. And uh, this is the terrain on a beautiful rotating table. Look at this. Sorry. Isn't this great? We put <laughs> a, at least two and a half minutes effort into this. So it's really good. We got these little gauges here, which all of this is, <clears throat> they use the term bespoke. Bespoke. It's not really a term here oh, in the like US, that. but like a, it is bespoke ruler. So this I is feel a, like I need a monocle. <laughs> Just take off one of your. There we go. Just break your glasses. Right? Yeah, breaks. Are yours round? No. Would be the first time. So <laughs> we got this one, which is actually just a regular gauge. So if you grab that mortal portents one over there, it's actually the exact same as this. Just call them right? mortal portents. Isn't that? It's malign. Yeah. Oh, mortal, malign. Yeah. Word. Same thing. Right? So it's literally just a measure ruler it's the exact same length as this one and then this is just a six inch widget and then you can use if you want to you can use a regular ruler they said you can do that um but then i also colored for the demos i colored the things that you can actually see in the rule book they have like the square one is blue and then the triangle one is black and then the circle is white oh, so i that. colored them so that when you're looking at it in the rule book you can see the blue is the three, three inch, inch. mm-hmm and I might put a little number there as well, because that might help you. Remember, squares are threes, apparently. Right? It's got, it's got four sides, so it's three inches. And circles are twos. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And, and then it, we've got the... I guess you can't copyright the numbers one, two, and three. Right. You know? That's exactly what we said before. So we've got the yeah, orange, no. which is the pentagram, and then that one's a six inch with five sides. I thought Satan had the pentagram. That's a little not sex. Ah, oh, yes. did you see his new video, by the way? Not he is completely butt naked. Oh, I'm not surprised. And I, I don't want to watch and that. And his backup no. dancer is completely butt naked. Well, it's go it's funny because, you know, Spotify, not that I've watched the video yet. I will. Uh, but Spotify does, like, when you're driving, it does, like, little, like, see my videos. So it's, like, literally him grinding like that for, like, on repeat. For the whole stuff. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, I like Speaking it. of grinding. I like his music. You have orcs and you have chainsaws in here. That can grind. Orcs grind. Sure. <laughs> I just imagine an orc sliding down a pool. I'm really trying call to take me, me away from call me by your name. Naked. Oh, call me by your name. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of poles in these sets here. Uh, uh, so, uh, orcs could get around. Oh, check out this sprue, though. Look at that. So these orc sprues are these awesome. They sure build... are plastic models. Right? They... <laughs> <laughs> it's the best unboxing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you hold sprues full of plastic. You have a new... <laughs> I would have never expected that. <laughs> now everyone's going to rush to get it, you know. Yeah. Oh, it sells out. To get it. Oh, yeah. uh, it, set, it builds two sets, so each one has... A fine vintage. <laughs> 2021. You can always smell it. So they've got two sets. They've got the ones that are, like, specialists in here. Um, Wait, aren't they all specialists because they're all commandos? However, you can build them as regular commandos. Same thing with the Kriegsmen, so, or the Corpsmen. I, do I just, like, definition aren't... Commandos already specialists. No, so inside that the being sneaky ones, they're elites, right? Which I believe they're elites inside the, the Codex, four, which I have. Over for all you Age of Sigmar fans, it's the 40k version of a cruel boy. Yeah, literally sneaky, mm. cunning. Well, currently they're on the table, but they're yeah, purple, which is why they're invisible. Yep. Uh, but it has two sets of those, and it uh, so you can build regular commandos. So if you were to nice. I don't know get another sprue, you don't have to build them as special. This dude literally never... has a balaclava. Like, he looks like he's going to be an SAS yes, dude. Yes, he is. Oh, that was an orc from the planet of Hereford. And he said it was just a nice sprue of plastic. It's got cool stuff in here. Speaking it's of awesome. Hereford, I watched that SAS Red Notice on my flight back to Mexico. That's a really good movie. I've never seen it. It's Ruby Rose is the main villain. Oh. And she's already a terrible actress, so <laughs> it just makes the movie better. Yeah. So... 
And she has awesome. a weird bowl cut. Like, you ever, well, you're not, if you're not English, English people will get it. If you've ever seen the Mr. Bean episode where he puts a bowl in a kid's hair and cuts around it, that's our hairstyle. Wait, nice. we, we all had that bowl cut in the 90s. Then. Right, well, that bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how they did it. Okay. Yeah. 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 We started to copy broken accents on hairstyle. Just <laughs> saying. Anyway, great, great movie. But so then this is available for demo Commando starting, uh, we'll say starting tomorrow once I get the kill teams painted up and assembled and everything. So starting Saturday tomorrow, you can come in and demo Kill Team. Nice. You can take a look at the rule book today Ready if you release want. Release next Saturday. Uh-huh. Everything uh, is for pre-order on the website. Yeah, Gigabyte's online. And then when you go over there, I think it's on the first page, but if you just look up Kill on the search bar... Uh, you then... will have the FBI come to your door. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you searching for killing a lot? <laughs> Which I do, uh, but that's a different story. Oops. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's available on Gigabytes Online. You can also come in and pre-order in store. Um, yeah, we have 80 of the core set coming mm-hmm. in. Uh, I want to say at least 50 are pre-ordered. Yep. Like a lot of them. So we have our yeah. first question from the audience. Yes, question uh, time. Mitch wants to know, is that all the terrain that comes in the box? No, there's more, but that's the only ones that I've actually uh, uh, primed uh, and uh, gotten any, any like color on. Yeah. So they have these gates here, which oh, these are the barricades. Brie. Uh, uh, those are, I think, considered obstacles scatter, that they can go they over. Oh, you got little bridges. Uh huh. Little bridges oh, in between. Little, little, little this bridge. is a little uh, oil pump, I believe, and I'm not sure how that works in Orky Tech, but it looks cool. It uh, it they does. they say it works, so right. it works. Yeah. So I don't think it moves, but it does bring oil up from the ground, which is cool. They have smaller barricades. I think there's five or six of these little one-man barricades. They fit one or two dudes behind them, and then they have these slightly larger ones, which look like they have, oopsie, uh, they look like they have, like the <laughs> doors, the little sprue, <laughs> a little sprue bit yeah, that holds little, inside the little, door. Little, I'm just going to leave it like that. That's a little case. Yeah, yeah, a little cameo. Uh, so yeah, the, the, I think this is all the terrain that comes in, which is a lot. It fills up the whole board. Yeah. And in fact, when I cool. first put it on the table, I so, thought it was too much. So is this the size of a regular Kill Team game? This is regular, yep. This is 22 this by 30. 22.67 inches. Oh, no, no, 24.6. <laughs> Same as in that AOS box. Which is also not like a the proper thing is, It would make sense if it converted into another, like, you know, from metric to imperial. Nope. It doesn't. It doesn't convert in any does way. Not. Thanks, Games Workshop. Did you copyright this too? The fact yes. that uh, China had those and they were cheaper than the other ones. Right. And that's what they were with. Right. So we have another question on Dear, yes. Miss, dear Mr. Questions. Games Workshop, we miscut uh, these boxes. What can you do? We'll make so, a new game. So John Keenan, probably not of Keenan and Kel fame, says, uh, Remind me, when is the box set available for pickup? Next also, Saturday. You guys are a stitch. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is next Saturday, so the release official right. release day. You can pick it up, or uh, twenty eighth. Yes. Mhm. Mhm. Uh, but like I said, come in now. Come take a look at the core rule book. Get a demo game in Play starting game. tomorrow. I mean, if you want to, you could probably. I mean, I don't have the orcs assembled, but they have bases, so you can. And I mean, you can always start picking uh-huh. up stuff now to start building your kill teams that are not from this box so uh-huh. you know, it's not uh-huh. stopping you picking up other warhammer stuff to start building it's true it's true is uh it i to, is it hard to play with the board constantly rotating because no it's part of the it's game it's actually part of the new game mode that's that we kinda, have i thought that would be an extra challenge it's, it's actually, called the giga challenge giga yeah this team. is actually a, like a true representation of the planets too considering everything is flash just mm-hmm. like the right. earth and that's how yes. it's moving. Yeah. I've always suspected yeah. that was the case. I always thought it was slightly bowl shaped to keep the water in. Yeah. But otherwise, mostly flat. How does it balance on the turtle if it's just flat then? Because on the shoulders of four elephants. Yes. Oh. Okay. And that oh, keeps the water yeah, on. I guess that was astronomy yeah, that was one, yeah. astronomy <laughs> 101. I think the elephants drink the water <laughs> and then they get the water. They have the snouts to put the water in. I don't want to know how the water sky. gets back on the disc. <laughs> no, they, they have their snout, <laughs> right? And the snout spray the water back up onto it. In yeah. the sky. Well, how does it, wait, if the turtle drinks the physics, water, David, get, physics. If the turtle drinks the water, how does it get no, to the No, the turtle elephants? doesn't. The elephants drink the water. <laughs> oh, the turtle. Uh, is, uh, right? 101. <laughs> the turtle has to guide the thing through space, which also reminds me, how does the sun work in Discworld? It goes over and around her. The sun stays with it as it goes through space? Yeah, like or is the turtle the... still orbiting it heliocentrically? No, no, no. The sun goes around the turtle. So the, the sun's, sun's going around, around the, the turtle? Yeah, they go around the turtle. So the sun's mass is less than the turtle? Yeah, it's only a small sun. It was really close? It's a planet ran by magic. You're right. <laughs> I forgot! I... It's like this board. It rotates magically. Yeah, you should have a sun going around. <laughs> we could see... That's why they call it... What do they call it? It's it's Rimward and... Rimworld. No, no, no. It's Discworld is the world. But like they call it oh, Rimworld. Oh, Rimworld's a video game. Like instead of east and west, there's Rimward and... 
I can't remember. Forks tongue. They do the same know. thing in, in Age of Sigmar because they're planes, not planets. So it's like it's word it's a, and then yeah. prime. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Next, next is next yeah. 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 Speaking well, it doesn't matter. Magic. The rules don't matter in Age of Sigmar right? rounds of how big a planet yeah, actually is. Cool. Like, good segue with magic. Snapping your fingers. Uh, I think that Zach had a perfect pun. He said, "Assembling this is a snap." Ah! <laughs> it's a good one, Zach. It's a good one. So this is uh the Infinity Gauntlet uh, Lego. It's kind of like a collector's item, which is great. And um, you can collect it and collect all the stones. Is a ho- <laughs> is a hollow in the middle? Yes. So I can wear it. Yeah, because I'm. Oh yeah. No. Should have gone for the head. You, you could probably get like a couple of fingers in there. It looks like it just fits on the stand. It's not that big. However, it looks so cool. I'm not it sure it's that shiny though. I think it's the it? only one we have left, right? Do we have another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah we've, already, we've already Pick sold up. up. We've already yes. sold up all the rest. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a very nice one. We have a uh, Boba Fett's starship. Boba Fett's. Starship. <laughs> Zach made a great point earlier. He said, uh, "We, you know, uh, in a galaxy where the well, a main protagonist is like slaver, and there's plenty of slavers, they can't say slave one for some reason." In a galaxy where one of the main villains murdered a crap ton of kids. Yes. And sand people. Yes. And hates sand. I mean, yeah. who hates sand? And people, he was still a hero in three movies, you know, until the berry hit. End of the young ones. Um, yeah, this is a Slave One slash Boba Fett Starship. That was a cool one. I always like the smaller ones that aren't like the big collector's models because they don't fit on my shelf. I can't put the big old Millennium. Oh, boxes. well, the secret is to follow my routine where I buy the big ones and then just never take them out of the box. That's a good idea, yeah, too. They just sit in the box. <laughs> In fact, I, I got the Republic gunship, which is an exclusive one. Uh-huh. As you can only get that from Lego.com. It's super cool. The box is this big. <laughs> what the box is? <laughs> Eventually, no one's going to have so much Lego stuff to build. When he gets I just assume, yeah, he's just going to get into it one day. Yep. And, and just like, be like... Oh, I'll be like, ah, my retirement fund. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's build some Lego. And I'll be like, no, picture. Coliseum pieces don't go on Star Wars pieces. So if you know the Arquitans... Or a Imperial light cruiser, because kids can't necessarily pronounce Arquitans. Uh, this is awesome, and it used to be, I think it was an expanded universe. I don't think it was ever canon until uh, Mandalorian. And now that Mandalorian... Oh, no, it's been canon it's... for a while. Really? It's got four. This model has existed in Star Wars Armada and stuff for a long time. Yes, but I mean, it used to, when it was very first invented, I don't think it was in like the movies or anything. Oh, it's never been in the movies. It's, been, yeah. it's an expanded universe. Did you say yeah. it was an expanded Originally universe? expanded universe, yeah. Yeah. What he said is what I said. <laughs> Uh, this is my oldest brother's favorite ship, so he's going to be getting this for Christmas. I mean, he, uh, don't wa- if he's watching, he's not going to get it for Christmas. Uh, it has an inside, and this is the Mandalorian set, so you've got... <gasps> you got that is Grogu. the reason to buy it right there. It's Grogu. Uh, it's it's a little dark, Lego Grogu. Not the dark saber. Uh, no, I don't care about that. That's a little black stick of, you know... It, it even shows that it's glowing. It is not Can glowing, I folks. bother me? Is this? There's no, like, Luke Skywalker on this. Spoilers. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! There you isn't can CGI in your own. Just make I any think... model and repaint the face, and that's basically what they do. And right? it even has tiny little uh, tie that's fighters. <laughs> tiny little tie fighters. It's awesome. Well, get yeah. that one. I might be. That's Bob Ross. The awesome. Bob Ross of Star Wars. We're gonna put a tiny little Star Wars. Just, I mean, yeah. Every tie fighter needs a happy friend. Is that the first Giancarlo Esposito? I didn't say his name right at all. Giancarlo action Esposito. Figure? Oh, action figure. Like, is that the yes. first one? Because he's been in probably the only one as well. Like, good stuff. Yes. Yeah, what if you get two and then burn part of his face off? Hey. Speaking of but action, then, but then he'd be Nicolas Cage and or and John, or John Travolta. Travolta. Oh no! <laughs> I got take it's his a face off. I'm gonna take his face off and put it on another fella's face. On. I don't know what people uh, cracks people up here. <laughs> face off. That's how an Irishman describes move face off. See, the fella took his face off and he put it on another fella's face. <laughs> that, I have an Irish accent. Yeah. That makes everything funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Necro Mold Monster know. Battles Battle Box. Oh, so this, this is the new character. Yeah. So what did you like about it when you uh, decided to get this for resale? That dude's video was pretty awesome, to be honest. It was like super flashy, like 90s like toy thing. It's creepy crawlers. But the really crawlers. cool... Creepy crawlers, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, like, you have moles, and you basically create the monsters. And to fight them, you smash them. So you just like smash up the monsters when they die. Smash you, them. you smash You've got smash the, smash the little the ring here, and, and you, you just got go. Little... Rock! Yeah, and you. Well, oh, I think the ring <laughs> also makes more monsters too. Like they're the power rings to create more stuff. Wow. So it's cool. And he like he had a great Kickstarter, and he has like, we have more expansions than that. I think we have like there's like oh, yeah. six expansions, little booster boxes. But it's it's super super cool. This has been on the website for pre-order for a while. 
And now it's available. Um, and Caster available. ring included. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. It, it just looks super awesome. It was a really highly successful Kickstarter. I think a lot of the popular board games that are happening, like we did a video yesterday with Catapult Kingdom, is getting a little bit away from theater of mind stuff and more of the physical interaction. There's always been games. Like, what was the old one called? Uh, Catapults oh, and... Huh? Things like Mousetrap. I yeah, promise yeah. you, that was the first name that came to my mind was Mousetrap. Too. That's the first thing yeah. I thought. Uh, uh, Crossbows and Catapults, I think, was the old. Uh, yeah, 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 which is like Catapult I think Kingdom that's pretty much Catapult Kingdom as a remake. Yes, of, right? it's correct. Uh huh. That is it. That Catapult is it. Feud. But as Mousetrap, any of those physical games. And now that we have uh, technology for things like this, um, it's awesome. Yeah, this I mean, is, well, this, is going back, this, this is going back to the 90s style of gaming uh -huh. where you like uh -huh. create a thing that of like putty and mash it up and it's all gross. So, Sounds so. like a good time. Your Super. older sister will go, Ew, gross! But you and your friends will have a rad time. Is this a game? Put on someone's plate. Time. You're going to have a rad time. That is the perfect way to describe it. I mean, this it, game. Really, it really does look fun. Rad. It's awesome. Ages for nine up Two. and uh, conforms to ASTM D4236. Just so you know. Take that, California. <laughs> You know, everything's like a carcinogen in California. No, well, nearly everything is. Like, yeah. Except, like, like wheatgrass. A and taxes. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that's not a carcinogen in California. Taxes do make you grow old. Yes, it's true. Can you hand me the Marvel Crisis Protocol new releases, ready, please? Oh, yeah. So, MCP, uh, as uh, always, uh, they have been absolutely know knocking me. it out of the park. We're talking MCP. <clears throat> you done with MCP? You know me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got Daredevil and Bullseye, <laughs> and uh, their sculpts are absolutely killing it. Would you say he's on target? Yeah. I'm trying not to break my back thinking of a bullseye pun. No. That's a deep cut, Marvel fans. <laughs> Hit smash that subscribe button. Uh, that he gets his back broken and replaced I... with an adamantium back in the comics. Oh, so I have no oh. idea. That's his, his powers, he has an adamantium. Uh, uh, amazing Spider-Man and Black Joe. Cat. And oh, Black Cat's got this epic backflip pose where she's actively somersaulting off of a... Off a rock. Piece it's Marvel Price Protocol. They're jumping off a rock. Typically. Everything's jumping off a rock. Or no, a not anymore. Look. This one is uh, magic. He's jumping off of magic. He's jumping off of magic. Mysterio has his uh, magical Mysterio energy, which I don't know how that works. Mysterio and Carnage is weird. Oh, you just mentioned Mysterio in that box. Yes. Yeah. But there's a movie star in that box. What? Myst oh. Carnage? Yeah. Woody there's Harrison? a movie coming out now. Carnage. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Mysterio is also there. Will be sad. Carnage. I think it's the title. Jake Gyllenhaal was yeah, by the way. Was, he it. was the perfect Mysterio. Yes. The uh huh. Yep. If they couldn't get Bruce Campbell, he was the next best. Yeah. As Mysterio. They were, yeah, they no. were they were leading up. Sam Raimi for was leading Bruce up. Campbell. The whole reason Bruce Campbell was in like the, every Spider Man was he was supposed to be Mysterio. Yeah. That suddenly makes sense. Yeah. He would be great at it too. Maybe with the multiverse thing, they could bring that in. Ago. He could. He could. But then again, with the multiverse, like uh, Evil Dead is also going to enter at some point. Because he does enter the Marvel Universe. Really? In a crossover comic? Yeah. Man. There's everything in the multiverse. I mean, Batman fought the Ninja Turtles. So, you know, comic books. I mean, there's the, only so the Justice, that, League, the Justice League fought the Avengers. Yeah. And whoever won, the other world was destroyed. I'll I mean, be honest, that's why I never got into comic books. Yeah, I was reading about it's a little convoluted. I mean, there's like 80 years. Why is now, Batman fighting the Ninja Turtles? Well, this... because Shredder teamed up. Uh, he got Foot Clan to team up with... Uh, the League of Assassins? Yeah, that's the League of Assassins. League of Assassins? Yeah. Which seems like the Foot Clan is a bunch of teenagers who get beat up by turtles in League of Assassins and like... Really? The Assassins. turtles are the bullies there then. You know, it was just teenagers. Foot Clan was teenagers trying to find their place in the world. Go back and Maybe watch the, the old TVs. movies. No. Look at like all the disenfranchised youth that the Foot Clan gives a cool hangout and they have video games. Yeah. Eh, that's why you gotta rob a truck. It's like, it's that like, it's like Rumble in the Bronx with Jackie Chan. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're all disenfranchised teenagers that uh -huh. you know, rob at grocery store. They could just come play at a tabletop store and be fine. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh... Travis wants to know if it's challenging to yeah. roll dice on a rotating table. I yeah. mean, no. It's oh, like, I got some dice. If you, hit, if you hit some models, they're dead, and if they roll off, it doesn't count. It's just like a normal table. Oh, you're the only one on camera. Oh. David. Oh, no. Do something. <laughs> Take me off, Lou. Uh, well, we've got, we've oh, got some God. Uh, dice right here. I, that works great. Way to roll it when no one can see it. There you go. Now they can see them. It's, Bam. That's pretty fun. Don't try this at home, folks. Very we're just going to leave train this like this. Train professionals. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to leave this so. like this and just have it at the table over so, there. So quite quite weak for releases then, besides the Christ mm -hmm. Protocol, the Legos, the Necromoles, the Kill Team. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot. <laughs> we do have new releases, but I can't even announce them yet because right. we're, we're, we're under. So new. So new. That new. So new, I can't even talk about them. 
Now, uh, let's go a little bit into lore. What the heck is Death Corpse Agree? Oh, like... you, you have sold Travis on the fact that you can roll dice on this. Great, I'll take my commission. All right, Travis. <laughs> Bam! Remember, um, remember to up your orders with Games Workshop. It'll ship in six to eight months. <laughs> Someone was asking about that yesterday. They said, I I'm looking for a certain model. Can I, you know, order it? And I said, <laughs> yes. Fly. You can order it. There's a big old because asterisk in there. You can always order it. Right. You can always order it. It's just, when does GW feel like? They're getting a bit better. They New releases are. aren't bad. I yes. mean, they're getting a bit better. Yeah. Yep. Uh, David yeah. Kelly has said, don't forget the army of clones, fast bread, and force feed child soldiers. And I just want to point out, I actually don't know which of these three franchises that could apply to, because it could apply to all three. I was going to say, <laughs> are we, are we, are, are, could be any of these. Guys. Are we talking about Clone Wars here, Star Wars? Are we talking about because them? technically all those, all the clones in are Clone like Wars are like 10 years old. Yeah, because they're all they're like kid, hyper accelerate age. So they're really yeah. kids. They got yeah. the mind of a child. Hmm. It's a children's ah, crusade. That's a Mad but Max, they don't that's a Mad Max Street child. reference, by the way. Because they're force educated Look at as well. Him. He is the mind of a child. Which is an ethics question then, isn't it? Because yeah. if they're force grown and then their brains are advancing as well, right? The 18 is an adult. Of course, we know that humans, the male brain matures at like 25. So... If they're at least 18, <laughs> but they're they're vat grown and force grown to a higher speed, which, by the way, in lore, in the expanded universe at least, I know this, the reason why they can't be accelerated more than 10 years is because of the force. So there's a, a schism in the force when someone is uh, grown too fast. So if someone is grown like at three years maturity, then they go insane. They Literally had to find insane. that beach from that new M. Night Shyamalan uh -huh. movie. However... Have you seen that? No, There's a new movie called Old, where people go to a beach, and they all start aging rapidly. I saw the preview, and then I saw who the director was, and I decided I'll wait. And, and to be honest, I saw the pitch meeting. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> all I, that's all I see. <laughs> yeah. That's all I, all I saw. I got about halfway yeah. through Black Widow, and I was like, nah, the pitch meeting was more fun. Oh, Black oh, Widow is so bad. I like yeah. that movie. Can we do a yeah. whole show? Where, oh, I like, I like, no, I like Florence Pugh. I thought she was really good. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah, she had a really nice vest. Right. Yeah. Good costume. I'm glad we got the origin story in that vest. That's what I cared about. The it costume was very was, important. Was the vest fire. was very, very important. The yeah. vest was very important. Yeah. But yeah, no, but order, back, to, order... back to Thrawn, if I can finish my thought real quick. Oh, you were, and you I... were talking about yeah, Thrawn. Yeah, yes. Tell us about Grand Admiral cloning. Thrawn. So Thrawn figured out that in order to force accelerate the cloning past 10 years, you have to remove the force from the equation, which is why he brings in Isalamiri, which is a special... They're from... Uh... Oh, God, what is the planet's name? It's not Dagobah. But East Salamary sounds like a Dathomir. So East Salamary are that, they're a worm a that's a I think a couple of feet long. However, they project an anti-force bubble around them. That's so the, the expanded on his shoulder. Yes, right? he yeah. has an East Salamary on his shoulder, and uh, they prevent the force from interacting. So when they vat grow, John, I don't read comics, Caspian. <laughs> Ask him, what, is it, what do we know about the Yuzong Bay? Yuzan Vong. Yuzan Vong. See, there you go. Look at that. That was a trick question. That was a trick question. That was a trick question. You got him. You got, got me. Him. Dang it. <laughs> that was good. Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> Let's, let me tell you about the, the gospel of Yuzan Vong. They have force lightsaber resistant armor, right? Yeah, well, so they're from uh, a different galaxy, which doesn't Isn't have that force at all. Isn't that Which is point? weird like to me, because I would think that the resistant. force would be in the entire universe, but apparently the force is only in the galaxy. So when they come in, the force doesn't interact with them properly. Which is why it's weird to fight them and stuff. Also, they have their weapons, which, uh, like, if you fire a very large turbo laser, it gets eaten up. But eventually, they find that if they shoot all the turbo lasers at a really low uh, voltage and low power, then they can fire it, rapid fire it, which overwhelms the uh, Zen Funk defenses. Anyway, I'm going to stop nerding out about that. <laughs> but let's just say, I was gonna say isn't that how to beat, like, the Borg? They change the phase every time. Yeah. No, that's... that's yeah. That's yeah. How they get around. And that's also how they fight the Tyranids. Yeah, but they didn't actually beat the Borg. They just destroyed one little thing on the Borg cube. But they only but they... to fight them to stop being a And then eventually the Borg the adapted to that, which yeah. made the episode so terrifying, which was so cool. <laughs> Let me nerd about Star Trek. I wonder who'd win between the Borg and the Tyranids. Ooh, that's a good question. The Borg and the Tyranids? Borg. <laughs> Let's see if I can correct Why? So the Tyranid up. adapt biomechanically, however, bio oh, biologically, or... right? Or... But the Borg adapts win... with technology. Right, well. Who would win between the Borg and the Tau? Borg. Because the whole idea of the, 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 the there is the whole story of the Tau fighting the Tyranids, and the Tau have to keep adapting and upgrading the weaponry to fight the Tyranids because the Tyranids right. adapt and then they upgrade and they win right. and then they but come back adapt. And then the they win. Borg's adaptation process is hyper fast. Like if you think about how like quickly. Admech, I think because Admech are the ones that are like. No. No, they take like two weeks to yeah. pray. Right? Yeah. It... <laughs> 
any of oh, the... Oh, dear God, Emperor. Sorry, I'm Messiah. Yeah, excuse we me. We must Dragon pray to this new heretical whatever. I'm I think sure they would immediately just become Borg. The, like, oh, orcs, yeah, yeah. the orcs <laughs> might oh, be able I to fight I sent the Borg. Messiah inside you. But could the Tyranid... they're already Borgish because they're replacing all their pieces. Right. But but again, it's the speed of adaptation is the big thing. That's how Ad makes right. his pieces, like he's like he eats a burger. Because the only reason, like if you uh, in in first contact, uh, Picard shoots the Borg with the the bullets right in the holodeck, which is a weird scene. But let's not let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> but he shoots it with bullets, right? And it doesn't have time to adapt. But if he kept using bullets, they would be able to adapt their shields to bullets. Yeah. So the, how do you adapt all your bullets for Admech? You launch a bunch of bullets at him with your disgusting Skatari stratagem that can fire a bunch of, you know, high you, AP you fire different, like... You're going to change silver, it? Silver bullets, bronze bullets, uh -huh. wood bullets. But then the Borg adapts to one <laughs> dude shooting at him, and then all of the Borg are now instantly adapted because they're in a network. I don't know. So it Borg, doesn't man. Make sense, the Borg with Nothing makes wild. sense. That's what we're talking... We're nerds, David! <laughs> Nothing. Death Corps agree. Let's talk about the fact that they're clones. <laughs> which is what the <laughs> well, clone discussion. That's what we about. were talking about. That's the whole point of this conversation. Yeah, this whole Go ramble on. is all about <laughs> Death Corps. <Secret. laughs> there was a point. <laughs> no. <laughs> we just haven't got to it yet. So they're clones, but no, they're not cloned. They're background. Ah, okay. So okay. Death Corps Creek had a giant civil war, right? Okay. So like, a bunch of them turned away from the emperor. They have a giant civil war. And then they nuked the whole planet. It's the only way to win the civil war is they nuked the whole planet. And they all like start living underground, and their their ethos is we've we've failed the emperor, right? And we need to get his forgiveness. And the only way to find his forgiveness is through blood. It's the only the only thing they have left to pay the emperor is blood. Okay. So they start tithing more than anybody else Very ever. Corn like, but okay. Well, no, 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 not not like corn like dealing blood like their lives. That's ah, all they have left to okay. give is gotcha. their lives gotcha. and their service. So they start tithing and raising more regiments than pretty much anybody else. Mm -hmm. And in order to keep up the massive tides, they start basically growing test tube babies and back growing them. Wow. And they do the same thing where they like they grow them into bats, they accelerate their growth, and they literally have no personalities whatsoever. I don't think they even have names. Um, the last Krieg book I re wrote was or read was Dead Man, Dead Man Walking, which was like uh, Krieg versus Necrons. Yeah, doesn't go well for Krieg. Uh, spoilers. Um, yeah, they're just... And they're just like X or... They're like... Um, Admech. Stormtroopers. Well, Admech have the numbers. No, no, no. Like, these are like... They don't... They have designations, basically. Damn. Yeah, well, I guess they're like Admech. Yeah, because some Admech have names and numbers. Right. Be like, right. Bolt 72 or... Yeah. Uh -huh. Mechanicus Call. Or... But these are like FN209 or whatever he is. Wow. Almost yeah. That was almost Finn's number. Wow. So yeah. they're just... How old are they then? They're a couple years old? Probably they just don't have personalities. I mean, they're and growing, they just, and they're just they're just uh, no. hyper indoctrinated. There's brainwashed. something very suspicious about all that. Yeah, chaotic. Yeah. Almost. Well, no, it's just no just back back from babies, giving gas masks, and that's why like the whole idea is they're all dressed the exact same as well because they literally to prove they have no personalities. But they're, the they're all this actually has a picture of a dude that actually has his mask. I mean, off. they probably might have changed that at this point. You know? Or really, do they? Yeah, there's a dude without a mask right. on. I'll find it. I mean, I imagine some Look. of them have, because I'm pretty sure the um, there's a named character, Creed character, there was from Ford World. So, I mean, they probably do eventually get names. And they have, yeah, Vern Lansk. Yeah, they're probably given names, but they yeah. used to, I don't know, back in the day they just had designations, so it might have changed since. Mm -hmm. Listen, Games, Work right. Games Workshop's not above, um, <laughs> not above, uh, what's the word? Retcon. Yeah. You know? You so, think? <laughs> but that's, that's the fluff I know, you know. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a well, you have a huge forgeable army. I do. Mm. So many, so many Creek. You should play with it. I don't play with anything. Why? It's, you know, I know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so time, yeah, that's that's time. available. What else do we have to talk about today? I mean, we can keep talking about cloning in Star Wars. <laughs> you, you build through all the products. So. Right. We yeah. do. We burn straight through. The section is just fighting over xenomorphs versus tyranids. So let's go. Let's go. Okay. That, what are your opinions? Let's, let's hear it. Let's okay, start so going through it. Clone Wars. Here, can I? Can I see? Clarify. That one was about Clone Wars. Although it's funny, the parallels that we just found out in the Creed people. They're not clones, but no, they're bat babies. Yeah, they, they're the test tube babies. I, I, I'm I'm with everyone on here so far. Jen, you're right. They're a hive mind and adapt simultaneously. Which exactly? Like but so. I mean, so the one hive mind. Slash sci-fi fantasy thing could be the board. Ooh, it would have to be... So well, I mean, in Star Trek, Voyager did it the right way by interrupting their hive mind capabilities. Tyranids have a good opportunity because, yeah, how do you adapt to, like, 
claws ripping you from piece to piece. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, you shield them, but they keep coming. Right. Shield the uh, Borg shielding can also adapt to physical projectiles and physical objects. So yeah, but if enough bury you to the ground, <laughs> I think then it's actually yeah. where they go. Okay, they just park a biomass on you, and then right. Yeah, what do you do? Well, well it's also you it's also move. scale as well. So Tyranid high fleets are huge. Like their solar system. Big, well, you have to right? remember the whole idea is that you haven't even seen the hive. Right. At the moment, it's you've just that big. The tendrils. Uh huh. So at and the some tendrils, point, the whole mass is going to hit, and the guys are screwed. Like Armageddon almost fell from a tendril. Yeah. Right, and there's only that's only one tendril, and then tendril. They said, Isn't, that, isn't there one bit where it's actually was coming Armageddon, from above? Was Armageddon attacked by Tyrannus? Not uh, no, Armageddon is orc. Ball, I've been dude. reading the orc codex. Ball almost fell. Uh, Ultramar. Ultramar almost that fell. That yeah. lead to the Leviathan or Kraken? God, I can't. I no, so Kraken is um. I think high feet Leviathan. Leviathan, no, Leviathan was Ball because mm -hmm. they had the source book Leviathan. Mm -hmm. That was, was Kraken Leviathan and. Uh, I can't remember the other one. Someone put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah someone I'll, 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 yeah, maybe it was Kraken. I don't know, but anyway, so the that you have they, they're so large that the Borg what what the Borg what's a Borg cube going to do against an entire system of? You're right, because eventually leave. Yeah, <laughs> time travel. Right. Oh yeah, time travel to the past. That does the Borg an advantage. They can actually just time travel. Give the kill the whales. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the plot hole of the time traveling <laughs> Borg. When when they time traveled, why did they? And anyway, yeah. I'm not going to go well, into that. Because they had to make a movie with all the people they could. Yeah. That's yeah. why. Yep. Oh, we do, we do have new products that we didn't bring over, actually. We have those Mork Borg products. Speaking of Borg, we have Mork Borg. And the other, Go get them, Zach. Uh, I didn't the... know what those were, so I didn't get them. These are actually um, third-party expansions for Mork Borg. Yeah, those ones. Right, I, was look... I was frantically looking around for new products. Yeah, you just more. More opinions here on... <laughs> Borg. I think I think Borg pretty much. So we got these in. These are very very super limited, yes. and uh, they're compatible with Mork Borg. And so this is the Sacred Teachings of Ty Titus the Unliving Magus. Well, there's two of them. Oh, the unclean I... uh, Leporello of the Foul Wizard Balm, or Baum. That's a heck of a title. Yeah, uh, but it, this it... is an accordion style actually. So it opens up and then it has two adventures on each. One adventure on each and side. And this is Kahlo's Book of Monsters, so it's like a monster uh, bestiary mm -hmm. edition mm -hmm. for Morkborg. It's awesome. So Irene, uh, one of the employees, opened this up and it folds out, and then you can read one side and then flip it over, get the other one, Super which cool. is epic. Just remember I love that. It. Um, and then RP there's a ton of RPG stuff being released constantly, um, especially because of Kickstarter. There's Tons of these were originally stuff. a Kickstarter, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Phil Reed, who works for Steve Jackson Games, has his own company where he made those. And he mm -hmm. was like, Hey, I have a few of these left if retailers want to buy them. I was like, Oh, punch them. Yeah, why not? Yeah, so um, companies have been knocking it out of the park. Modifius has been knocking it out of the park with RPGs. They've got the Fallout, they've got Dune RPG coming out. That's out. Uh, they had, oh, it is out now. Yeah, we got that. Okay. Yeah. Cyberpunk Red, which they came out with a couple several months ago now. Cyberpunk's not Modifius. Isn't it? No. Cyberpunk is uh, our Talosaurian. Mm. Or Talosaur. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. Pretty so, sure, right? Correct I, me if I'm wrong. I get the PDFs and I sometimes... <laughs> but all of these companies are knocking it apart. So if you are wanting to get into RPGs, now is a great time. And there's tons of people that want to play different mm -hmm. styles. Not just Dungeons & Dragons. But speaking of Dungeons & Dragons, Wednesday nights are picking up again. Yeah, very, very busy. So we've got our D&D &D, uh, Adventurers League. And we've had several people ask throughout the week, how do I get involved? You physically show up, and then they will help you get your character. If you don't have one already pre-built, they'll spend some time. Mark Buffin yeah, is Avengers, also about that. Yeah, Adventures League is great because it's like levels 1 to 10, I believe. Yep. So it's really about getting into the game, and then mm -hmm. from there on, you find your groups to play on our days, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mark does a great job at that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Tuesday night board games. We've got oh, about a dozen players per week now, which is great. Mm -hmm. So you just show up at, I think they have 6 o'clock, and you just come play a board game. Uh, you can bring your own board games if you want to. Um, that one's great. Friday night fights starting. Well, we have tonight at seven seven thirty ish, around there. Around about that. I will bring some orcs. I'm gonna be playing tonight, which is awesome. I might play some kill team this weekend. Now that I have the core rule book here and a whole demo table to play with. Amazing and right. terrain that I've done a great job of dry brushing silver all over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did more. You sprayed it brown. There's a, yeah. yes, I, I, oh, uh, I wanted to actually show this off. So this matches pretty well with the terrain. It's the Army Painter Leather Brown. So if you want to have it matching pretty closely to this, 
uh, this terrain, I would say leather brown, and then dry brush a little bit of like a tan or a desert color from any number of the paint lines. So if you dry brush the bottom of it, I think it'll look pretty good. But a lot of people are probably going to be painting these to be agnostic to the table. Because if you put this on any of those other mats and it's already desert colored, it's a little bit off. But yeah. if you paint this as regular steel, I think it can go into any number of things. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Necromunda could work really well for that. And Necromunda League, I think, is also uh, started up. We had, yeah, it was huge. We had eight players yesterday, I think. I don't know, it was busy yeah. yesterday. That's it all I busy. know. We had tons of Sigmar players. It's Thursday. Yeah, huh? It's Sigmar and Necromunda. Yep. I don't know why people play Sigmar. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's no. He's I got mean, red orcs too. I fight the urge for Necromunda every day. I'm like, ah, I kind of want to, but then I remember I don't have time, and then I stop. Kill team. I mean, you have the army. Yeah, I do. I literally don't need to buy any models because yeah, I have right? so many Krieg. You know, I could use my grenadiers because I have a whole like squads of grenadiers that don't exist anymore. Ooh, like the model. The, there's no rules for grenadiers. Make them models. veterans. Hipster cred while you're playing. Yeah, yeah. like you know, just dudes with, like the, all the extra like. Right, very Padding. grognard of you. Yeah, I've got models on to stroke my neck more. beard and yeah. like. <laughs> you know? There was actually someone that came in the other day, unironically uh, looked at one of the things on the shelf and was like, "This is a waste of money." And like, you're in a game store, sir. Like, <laughs> that's it's, what we do. The entire <laughs> store is a luxury. It's welcome, all luxury welcome to 2021. Right? Let me tell you about how stuff costs these yeah. days. <laughs> I have restocks coming. I have a new game coming called Escape from Flat Earth, which is awesome. It has me in it. I'm in the game. That's and, awesome. And so is Noah. Nice. And I am the Mandalorian, and he is the child. And hey! The card, the card is the child. That's the name, nice. that's the name of the card. Nice. Uh, we have that coming from China, and we have a restock for Condition Chips coming. Oh, Condition Chips are awesome. It's about 7,000 items between uh -huh. the two products. Mm -hmm. It's three pallets. Mm. $2,936 for freight. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I looked at the price and I went, "Ha! Huh, what a great price! Do it now, because that's that is that is shipping these days. That a thousand dollars a pallet was not crazy to me. I was like, huh, oh, it's only a it's only a little under like around fifty cents an uh, an item to get to here." Welcome to 2020. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, that is that's the world. So anyone who says oh, with money. Just just does not understand. Yeah, it was one of the I don't know. It was an item over there, the the, the dice. And I'm like, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. If you think or... someone's a waste of money, just don't buy it. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. I think they're my favorite. One of my favorite little memes is like the person goes, grabs the collar, and goes in, and is like, let people enjoy things. Oh, you know? it, it, it it's annoying because you have people say that and they go on about pricing, and then being on the publishing side now, since mm -hmm. since I'm a monster, I'm a I'm publisher, distributor, retailer, fulfillment. Fulfillment. I'm horrible. Uh, <laughs> you ask why I don't game. Uh, and seeing what just it costs just to make a product, it, most products don't make money to like the third print run. Yeah. Like you're losing money in the first print run. You might break even by the second. Unless like it's a it's a massive hit and mm -hmm. you you charge you get MSRP and you're selling it direct. Mm -hmm. But when you're selling it to like a retail like if you're wholesaling, so I buy a product and I wholesale to a retailer. Um I'm not making money really on that first print run. As I said, it cost me three grand just to right. get, you know, a bunch of twenty dollar items over. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's tough because I mean, I guess it's one of those things where shipping never had to be that cheap as it was, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many. Because they're right? never going to go cheaper, are they? They're never. Now that it's more again. expensive. No, someone said like me the other day, go. it's going to go back. Home. It's like it's not going back. Yeah. It is very easy to raise prices. Right. It's very hard to lower prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and then I'll, I'll tell you, once you lower the price, it's very hard to go back up. But and... Well, the tabletop industry is in a weird spot, too, because there's so many, like, it, I guess, in terms of inflation and everything, things should be way more expensive than they are, right? If you think about how much Legos have gone up, well, right? no, I don't think... Well, like, Legos are... are but they the keep their prices terrible. up. terrible. But they keep uh, their prices up, right, to match... Properly, so that they do. Same they as do. Games Workshop. They do. they do, and Games Workshop kind of does. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to imagine Games Workshop's charged higher because they have to pay artists stuff more and fees more, mm -hmm. and you know they get they get charged more because they're the premium brand. Right. But um, no, I mean it's it should be the price. The issue with the hobby industry is there's so many like bottom feeders who like mm. this is my rant again. Deep discount who deep discount everything right. right. They kill all the the margin to actually run an effective business. Right. The, the future of gaming is offering a premium 
experience. Like you're either a tiny like one man store, right? right? Who's one person working and they earn enough to earn a wage and they never really grow or mm-hmm. operating, or you mm-hmm. become a premium experience store mm-hmm. where you offer space and events, community, and community and products. Mm-hmm. And that's hard to do, right? Cause you have to have a big space, right? So we've got 8,500 square feet. Our selection is probably the best in the state when mm-hmm. it comes to miniature gaming. And someone actually posted recently in board gaming or yeah, board game selection good. is one of the best. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I can think of a store that is, I mean, I'm amazed, always amazed by their board game selection. Yes. But they're up in Flowery Branch, so they're nowhere near me. <laughs> hey, Meeple Madness. But it's uh, really, really great selection over there. But yeah. yeah. But uh, you have to have that premium selection in order mm-hmm. to, to be able to have the correct price and make profit and give a livable wage to your staff. Yeah, and like, <laughs> if you think about all interactions as a customer, when you go into a store and you want, you expect that, that uh, like with retail, that there is a selection. I've gone to so many LGSs where uh, there's not a selection. For years. You know? For years. For years. The business model of a game store was deep discount all this stuff, uh-huh. right, to get people in. Make the money on magic. Yep. That was their idea. Yep. Make the money on magic. And all those stores were like now, oh, man, Wizards of the Coast done just wrecking everything. Uh-huh. Value's not there. The company doesn't care. They're selling direct to Amazon. You know, Amazon's listing at like $80, $90 a box. And they're like, oh, no, what do we do? How do we make money? Maybe you run your business like a business. It's <laughs> an idea. You know? It's an idea. I like that. Um, and co- Like, COVID really showed that for a lot of places. Like, it mm-hmm. really, really hurt. COVID really hurt. But it really started to divide out. You were either a small one-man store who makes barely enough to get along and never grows. And it's just that one person mm-hmm. um, working 80, 100 hours a week, you know. Talking about how great they are. <laughs> and sure, they might be doing okay, you know, if, that's, if that works in your place. Right. Or you're the larger stores who, we honestly took a hit, right? We mm-hmm. took a hit, but we survived and we were still able to offer it. Well, if you or, didn't or, take a hit, yeah. I'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rough. And I think anyone who says you wouldn't take a hit during the last year and a half is lying. Yep. Um, but you, you're at that size and ability where you can just survive and still offer your, 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 mm-hmm. your products, mm-hmm. you know? So. And the big thing is, and I always say this constantly, is community. Because at Gigabytes, I was talking to a guy a couple of days ago, and he said, you know, I'd like to play 40K. <laughs> I said, well, that's not a problem. Yeah, that's not a problem. He's, he had never played it before. He got his first box. Like, he was just getting into it. He's like, how do I play? <laughs> we have Facebook, Discord. Like, we have ways for you to get involved because it's one thing to buy a game, and you like the models, and you like the game, and if you never play it, you don't keep buying and yeah. you don't enjoy your hobby at that point because if I paint models up well, it's like and any- I don't do anything with it's them. It's like anything, right? You can't go in and start something like, I play soccer, right? Yeah. But you can't just buy a pair of soccer boots, go to the place and go, I'm going to play now. And people be like, uh, you know, <laughs> like if the community's not there and you can't right. find a team, you're just right. some dude kicking the ball out on his own. Right. Just gets the cops called on you, right? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but it's very true. I mean, there are solo games, but for most people, you want to be able to arrange a game, play. And if you're brand new to uh, table, you're probably not watching this if you're brand new. But if you were or you know someone I who's bet interested. at least one of those 11, 12 people is brand new. Mm, I'd take that back. Nine. I would nine, take that actual, it's, well, it's, nine real people. Yeah, I would, I would take that, that back. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, I would take that bet. I would say that. If, yeah, if you are new or if you know someone who's new, then community. It's all about That's community. That's all about community. Because if, when I go, like when I was up in Cincinnati, uh, there was not very much community there besides 40K. There was a 40K community. No, but again, let me ask you, the stores you played in, did, did were they were they TCG focused on selling TCGs or were they like... No, a lot of them were board games and minis. Board games and minis. Really? Yeah. They yeah. didn't have much community. Yeah. But there's only like four or five stores there. Yeah, but they really have to grow. Like, it's surprising to me, to be honest, because mm-hmm. you do have a... An active, unless you're like literally just straight retail and people come in and buy and leave. They all had magic stuff, but it wasn't like they're a magic store necessarily. But I think it's also part of the new model, right? Like you're talking about where in the last couple of years they've had to go away from that as a main focus because of Well, you have to changes. offer something, right? You have to offer something different. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, and, and everyone kind of does it. Like you don't go to Dave and Buster's just to play video games anymore. Right. Like you go to like have a drink, a party. Mm-hmm. Hang out and, and the well, video game, and the gaming becomes a side thing of me. I can't people. imagine that someone would just go to Dave and Buster's and be like, oh, "I'm here to hang out." 
just all alone. Yeah, but never been Dave and Buster's. You're not a 50 year old recently divorced person. That makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, do people, people, <laughs> no, really, Dave and Buster's is the hot spot people, for 50 and above. People don't go, above. I yeah, guarantee people, there, a lot of, these days, a lot of people don't go to like a bowling alley specifically to bowl as right. a priority to go right. to hang out. Uh huh. Right. And have beers. Like I played soccer last night. And the soccer is the byproduct of me hanging out with my friends. We got creamed. We lost 7-0. Mm. It was the most fun game I've had in, in months. It was, right. it was amazing. I did great. I, I nutmegged a bunch of people. It was hilarious. Right. We still lost. <laughs> Joe did great. He's the goalie. He did a patent in banana. Yeah. Yeah, when he saves, he goes like this. This is big banana save. Yeah. 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 He's like He's the big banana shaped. <laughs> He's the big banana on campus. Uh, <laughs> That's a fish. That's a fish. No, I don't think a banana. Oh, no, he Joe, put his hands together. Joe, Joe's a... making poses. Yeah. <laughs> um, like so, it is all about community. Everything is about community, and, and as the, the sooner stores and stuff realize, like, you you're not you're buying an experience mm-hmm. rather than just buying plastic and models, and that's worth right. the money. That's right. worth the thirty nine ninety five for Mysterio. Mm-hmm. And I will for tell this, you for this box of of Jake Gyllenhaal and Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah, having the opportunity. This to... Colin Farrell and I don't know the guy's name from the movie. What? Uh, the... Ne- ne- oh, Matt something. Ben Is Affleck. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I was thinking of the new one. Matt, I'm not thinking Matt. Matt Murdock, which is his actual name. No, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. actually know. Charlie something. Charlie I don't something know. Is I the don't know. Thing. Yeah. I there barely know the names Here comes Spot Quick. Name a Spider Man actor. There's 12. Yeah. <laughs> and all the There's stuff, only one. Years. It's right. Tobey Maguire, yeah, sir. Classic. Uh, classic Spider Man. And uh, I don't think it's I really like Spider Man 3. That was a really good one. There was that one scene where he's got the hair swooped. Yeah, that's my favorite scene. He's dancing. That's a good, that's a good I have to like how they turned Venom into a Velociraptor for no reason. Yes. It was like, yeah, what if he just screams and runs around like a dinosaur? I'll be honest, Tom, Tom Hardy makes me forget all their Venoms. Even though, yeah, much no, as, I, as much as I love Topher Grace, uh, Tom Hardy is, is Venom for me. Yeah. Agreed. I love Venom. Yep. I'm excited. About it. I don't care. I'm just going to go see the new movie in the theater. It'll be great. First I thought the great. first one was good. Yeah. It was great. It was fun. I was like, he looked like crap the whole movie. Like, he's yes. sweating and gross. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he never Filthy. took his shirt off. There's no Marvel, like, app thing. Right. Like, here's the right. sweaty, gross oh, guy with a parasite. That's your hero. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, he sucks at relationships and he's kind of a jerk. Yeah, have fun with it. Yeah. As I've learned recently since DC Noah's it. going to preschool, like, I mean, it's, I could become a superhero because I could get the parasites from all the kids who have filthy hands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, oh, that was gross it, uh, reading, by the way. Is that, you that, said that this earlier. Disgusting reading, parents. Those those worm things. If you had but, to have an awful superpower, what would it be? Like I'd not a awful... good one, like invisibility or super strength. What's your Suicide Squad? What's sui- Yeah. Power. Ooh. Suicide Squad Wave One power. Uh, Put wait, it in the comments. What wait, would your wouldn't, awful wouldn't it be Suicide? Be? I mean, Polka Dot Man was Wave Two, and his uh-huh. superpower yeah, is very that's good. That's the good ones. That's the team that was supposed to do. This. His superpower seemed to be able to see his mother and everything. Uh, <laughs> superpower is. Uh, it's a weird one. I like that. Yeah, I feel like constantly. I feel like stuff, maybe? I feel like the first thing that comes to my mind is the the ability to know what the flavor is of any ice cream or happen to taste it first. It's <laughs> really specific. Yeah. Where did you come up with that I don't one? Know. <laughs> when that guy walks into a Cold Stone Brewery, he is ready. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even, like, I don't even put you into a coma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get within range of enough of me, you know. Put you out of your mouth. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that is really you good. Ask, I you love that. For useless power. So that is your useless power. Your I useless love it. Power. Yeah. For me, it would be. Uh, no... I see you had mango ice cream the other day. Like <laughs> maybe no. Knowing... Killer also had mango ice. Knowing cream. the overview of a book without <laughs> reading it, but then not being able to read the whole thing. So you're stuck with the knowledge of knowing what it's about, right? Without looking at it and That's reading it. Nearly every book I ever read. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't have <laughs> so that's what it is okay yeah, so i've had this power for a long time the power was inside you the oh, whole time. Yeah, my power is that over information it's octarius and it's got pictures okay we're done with that one <laughs> god which is funny because i was into wrath and glory which before it got uh cubicle seven tried their hand at it was a uh, ulysses ulysses was the company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a German company. They had two or three different sections about shooting mechanics, <laughs> but they all had different ways of doing it. So God, the first that. section of shooting was one way, and you had another section, and then the third section without indexes for. So they were all different and not compatible with each other because you had to play it slightly differently. I don't get why that, that book was failed. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a bit of a mess. So Cubicle Seven tried their hand, and it's a little better. No, it's much better. Yeah, Cubicle Seven is great company though. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Games. Uh, Soulbound AOS is fun. Yeah. Fun. So if you like AOS, I want to play that Warhammer uh, role fantasy. Yeah. But yeah. I also hate role playing. So. Yeah. Well, you could just be 
I mean, I think you could I feel be, like I'm faking it when I role play. You could be Kriegsman, no personality. You could just be like, eh, roll. <laughs> I bash it. Yeah, I grunt. Uh, uh, I've found that whenever whenever I try to roleplay, a few times I've done it, is mm-hmm. I become a very aggressive dwarf. <laughs> ask, ask, ask my friends at Origins. I was a very aggressive dwarf, and I died in like the third room. Love it. Uh, you just charge at everything. Yeah, yeah, it's the way yeah. to go. Yeah, Any other opinions on if? You, oh, there was a biological race that was the Borg yeah. couldn't assimilate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, species eight four seven two. Because Jim was asking, could xenomorphs grow and impregnate inside of a tyranid? Which is an interesting question, because theoretically Ooh. both would be trying to evolve against each other. Against each other. While it's I would say a couple of tyranids, w- I don't know how adaptable aliens are without having to, because they take on the genes of whatever they're inside, right? Yeah. So then, if they're inside, and then they, you know, pop out of it, how many tyranids can you go through before the tyranids adapt? That's, yeah. So, a few of them? I don't know. How does the tuna adaptation work again? So that they have to take the genetic material back to they something. They re-digest the material. They reabsorb into the hive, and that's how right. they learn. Right. And they absorb the, the aliens because they're acidic. Yes. They just be burned. They, they because they're also a acidic. Way to not be burned. Like because that's what the the. But then you'd have tuna with, with acidic blood. Because the the hormigons are the shooters, right? Yeah. So the Hormer gods are shooting acid. Hold on. If you have Tyranids with acidic blood, aren't those just the Zerg? Haven't we just made the Zerg now? Well, they, they I were. Mean, I think, yeah. yeah. Full circle. The Zerg were originally supposed to be Tyranids. So, yes. You know. yep. The important thing is, if you're killing bugs, you're doing your part as a citizen. That's right. That's right. I'm doing my part. <laughs> Smash it. Ah, I love Sasha Troopers. All right, y'all. It's time. It's 12 o'clock. We are opening up. So come on by. Come check out the kill team. Um, 1158, sir. Thank you very much. In true Gigabyte stat- fashion, we started five minutes late. We're ending two minutes early. That's it. <laughs> come check out Kill Team and uh, come read the bull book and get hyped for it because it's uh, it's gonna be a good time. Come read the first five pages of the rule book and then forget. Yep. See the overview. Just, just like that's that. all you need. Poor information retention, man. Strikes again. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. All right, y'all. We'll see you in store. Uh, come on by. Come play. Bye bye.